Now, just to review the way the timer works in CTC mode. <clears throat> First of all, we have the register TCNT2 that stores the count for timer two. So with every input to the timer, TCNT2 is going to increment. And in CTC mode, which is clear timer on compare match mode, after the count matches the value in the output compare register, so there will be one clock cycle where TCNT2 is equal to OCR2A. And then on the next clock cycle, the counter is going to be cleared. That is, TCNT2 is cleared, and also the output compare flag is set. So OCF2A goes from 0 to 1, the clock cycle after they're equal. Whenever we're using timer 2, we're going to be looking at four different registers in order to make use of this timer, in order to configure it. Um, to make use of it, we'll also use the interrupt uh, register, but in this video, we're solely looking at setting up the timer, so configuring it to operate how we want. And then in later videos, we'll look at using the timer and monitoring the, fl the flag. So the four registers that we're concerned with, first is TCNT2, as I mentioned, this is where the count is stored. Then we have OCR2A, which is output compare register for timer two, and there are two of these registers, A and B. So we're gonna use OCR2A. And this is the value that sets the top value for, or this is the register that sets the top value for uh, TCNT2. So this is as high as it counts, counts up to OCR2A. And then in the uh, AT Mega 328, there are two timer counter control registers for timer two, TCCR2A and TCCR2B. So the control bits are spread across these two registers. And we'll see all we'll see these two registers in more detail. Now, when we have the timers, um, we're going to work with both the WGM bits and the CS bits. The WGM bits set up the mode of operation for the timer. So for timer two of the AT Mega 328, there are three WGM bits. There. And for timer two, there are WGM 22, WGM 21, and WGM 20. And this table shows the um, all eight of the different um, modes of operation um, for these bits. So if they're all zeros, then um, we're in normal mode. And if we have 0, 1, 0, for WGM22, WGM21, WGM20, then we're in CTC mode. And you can see here that the timer is going to count up to OCR2A. So whenever we're using uh, timer 2 in CTC mode, we're going to want the WGM bits to be 0, 1, 0, because this table shows that will be CTC mode. Now the CS bits determine the prescaler. For timer two, it can't be used as a counter, so uh, CS bits don't have an option for using an external input. Um, instead, they're always going to use the machine clock. And CS timer two is always going to use the machine clock, and so the CS bits uh, set up the prescaler value. So this slide talks about how to um, think about the prescaler. So with no prescaler or prescaler of one, the timer is going to increment at the machine frequency. So for the 20, 328p with the internal oscillator, that's eight megahertz is the frequency. So every eighth of a microsecond, that timer would increment if we didn't have a prescaler. And for example, uh, Arduino Uno is a 16 megahertz uh, frequency because it uses an external crystal, even though it has the same microcontroller. So for um, the 328P with the internal oscillator, the no prescaler increment is, I call it T1, since that's the period for a prescaler of one. And that's just the inverse of the frequency. So one over eight times 10 to the minus six is an eighth of a microsecond. Now this counter is, an, is eight bits. It's an eight bit register, so its maximum value is 255. 
That means that the largest possible timer we can have uh, with T2 with no prescaler or prescaler one, same difference, is 256 times this period, T1. So 256 times an eighth of a microsecond is 32 microseconds. Now what the prescaler does is effectively divide the machine frequency for use by the timer. And this is equivalent to multiplying uh, this period by the prescaler. So dividing the frequency or multiplying the period is the same thing. So the next slide will give some examples. Um, here are all the different values of the prescaler that we can have for timer two at the 328. Uh, we've got one for the prescaler, eight, 32 prescaler, 64, 128, 256, and 1024. For example, if we had CS22, CS21, CS20 set as 100, so that's right here, then the we have a prescaler of 64. And in that case, the period for timer increments, so the amount of time between each increment of TC and T2, is 64 times T1, which is 8 microseconds. It follows that with this prescaler, the largest possible timer is 256 times the, the new period. So that's 256 times 8 microseconds, which is 2048 microseconds or 2.048 milliseconds. So that's the biggest possible timer we can have um, with an 8-bit timer with a prescaler of 64 because that's 256 pulses of this 8 microseconds. Now, some examples. Here's the sort of the fundamental equation, the delay from the timer, or that is the time that it takes for the flag to be set. And which flag was it? It's OCF2A, output compare flag 2A. Um, Okay, so the amount of time for that flag to be set is the product of the number of increments and the period, the time between each increment. So N is the value that we're going to store in OCR2A, and T is the prescaled, or the, uh, the machine period multiplied by the prescaler. So this product gives you the delay. For example, if we had a prescaler of one or no prescaler, and we assign the value 80 to OCR2A, to the output compare register, then that gives us 10 microseconds um, before the output compare flag is set. And here's the equation showing that. So the delay D is the value in the output compare register multiplied by the period, the time between increments. So that's 80 times an eighth of a microsecond, 10 microseconds. And so TC and T2, the time for it to go from zero up to 80 is 10 microseconds. Now, if we had a prescaler of 64 and we put 120 in the output compare register, then we figure out the delay by the same equation. So we have output compare register value multiplied by the period. And here it's T64, so that's 64 times, 64 comes from the prescaler. And this is 64 times T1, so that's 120, which is output compare register value, times 64 times that eighth of a microsecond. So that's 960 microseconds is how long the delay will be. This slide talks about how to calculate um, the remaining values. So we we know the WGM bits. So to use timer two in CTC mode, the three WGM bits are zero, one, and zero. And that comes from the table shown earlier in the video on an earlier slide. And whenever we want um, a certain delay, we still have to choose a prescaler, and that'll give us the clock selector bits. 
and we have to assign a value to the output from pair register. So here's the equation for figuring out what the prescaler is. The prescaler must be greater than, it must be at least um, the quotient of the delay and the biggest timer delay we could have with the uh, no prescaled period. So that is D over 256 times T1. So with no prescaler, we can remember for an eight megahertz clock, we could have a 32 microsecond delay. Well, if we want to delay bigger than 32 microseconds, we're going to have to slow down the clock. And this equation tells us by how much we'll have to slow down the clock. Um, okay. And then once we know the prescaler value, then we can just use uh, this equation to figure out what to assign to the register output compare register 2A. So that would be the delay divided by um, the prescaler, the product of the prescaler and the no prescale period. So really it's just the delay divided by the prescale period. For example, then we want to use timer two in CTC mode and have a 3.2 millisecond delay. Well, we need to first figure out what the prescaler is going to be. So we use the equation here prescaler is greater than or equal to this quotient. And so that's 3.2 milliseconds divided by 256 times an eighth of a microsecond. And that yields 100. So here are our possible choices for the prescaler values. And we need to choose a prescaler greater than or equal to 100. So that means that 128 will be our choice. So we know the prescaler is 128. And now we can figure out the number that we need to assign to the output compare register. So we're going to use the second equation here. Delay divided by the prescaler times T1. So delay is 3.2 milliseconds. Prescaler is 128 and T1 is an eighth of a microsecond. So that gives us 200. Um, so we'll need 200 and now Put compare register 2A and a prescaler of 128. Now, as I mentioned earlier, for timer 2 and the AT Mega 328, there are two timer counter control registers. They're referred to as TCCR 2A and TCCR 2B. And we have all these control bits spread across these two registers. There are six bits that we're not going to worry with because we don't need them for what we're doing right now. So all these COM bits and the FOC bits, just leave those as zeros. These bits here that are reserved, um, leave, they're just going to stay zero. So you can't write anything to these, so they just stay zero. So all we're going to work with here are the WGM bits and the CS bits. So just these six bits. So everything here and here is going to be zero whenever we write to these uh, registers. And then these, these bits here, we need to figure out what to put in. So for CTC mode, we know from the table earlier that uh, the WGM bits are 0, 1, 0. So we have 0 for WGM22, 1 for WGM21, and 0 for WGM20. And then our prescaler gives us the CS2 bits. Um, 128 is 1, 0, 1. So CS22, CS21, CS20, 101 for 128 prescaler. And so those go here in TCCR2B, 101. So here's the code for that, assigning these values to the registers in binary notation. TCCR2A equals 2 in decimal. I don't want to say all those zeros. And TCCR2B is 5 in decimal. Um, so you can see all zeros except for one right here. And that's for CTC mode. And TCCR 2Bs, all zeros except for one and one, which is the 128 prescaler. So back to our example with the 3.2 millisecond timer, here's what some of the code could look like. TCCR 2A, assign a value to that in hex. TCCR 2B, assign a value to that, and this time I wrote it in hex and then load the value in the output compare register, 200. 